Hello, I'm Dr. Inman. This is a miniature lecture on dysautonomia and unbalanced autonomic nervous system in domestic animals. The term dysautonomia is actually being used in the last 10 or 15 years by veterinarians who are starting to recognize the fact that the body's autonomic nervous system, non-voluntary nervous system, has a sympathetic and a parasympathetic layer to it. They both share the same amount of neuronal energy, if you will. The sympathetic should be very, very low, parasympathetic very, very high in the normal homeostatic mechanism. However, the flight or fight mechanism allows the sympathetic to rise up to run away from a saber-toothed tiger and concomitantly the parasympathetic um, goes down relative to that. It's a temporary phenomenon so when the animal runs away successfully from a saber-toothed tiger for instance then the and calms down the sympathetic comes back down to its low level and allows the parasympathetic to come back up to a high level. The thing that's of interest is that the conditions that occur along the spinal cord particularly this part of the bo body the paravertebral ganglion which is the sympathetic nervous system will basically be irritated and, and, and moderately elevate that sympathetic tonus, not to the point where we have disease, but nonetheless it does, which it concomitantly drops the parasympathetic down. So we end up, instead of this normal animal, we have this going on, and this type of a, a phenomenon of dysautonomy or unbalanced autonomic nervous system, where it should be up here, it's really right here, gives the predisposition to a number of different disease conditions, <clears throat> including accelerated, <coughs> excuse me, accelerated uh, gastrointestinal and respiratory and other types of disease processes that we see in domestic animals. The veterinary profession really doesn't spend a lot of time dealing with uh, neurology, unfortunately, because it's a bit complicated and we usually end up giving them steroids or putting them to sleep, which is sad. But in the last five or ten years, essentially, people have focused on the ability to, or at least on the consideration of trying to uh, balance, usually chemically, the dysautonomy or unbalanced autonomic nervous system. Now this is uh, the system that is not under the volitional control of the actual uh, host, in this case the dog, cat, the horse, or the human. What we can do and what we have done with the somatovisceral therapy is a technology whereby we restore this normal balance back to its normal level and therefore invariably drop the elevated sympathetic tonus back down to normal, allowing the parasympathetic tonus to go back up to normal, essentially, and optimize blood supply and neuronal supply to the various organs and tissues of the body. We do that with the somatovisceral therapy, which we describe in detail in Module 4 in the actual certification course. I cannot express to you how often and how common this condition is. Virtually every one of you has, right now, a, a certain level of dysautonomia in your spinal cord, I'm sorry, in your neurological system. The level of that basically is dependent upon um, how healthy you are. You all know people that are continually sick all the time. Well, these are people that are operating like this and also people that never get sick and also are seemingly healthy, young and, and vivacious and they're like this all the time. And It's only because the luck of the draw that those people that are ill have accumulated neurological interference in their paraspinal nerve system essentially in their spinal cord need to be essentially adjusted and or taken care of. So we go through and we adjust these animals and we do the somatovisceral therapy on them too. One of the other things that we're able to do is we're able to laser these animals too. In the human being we use 213 cycles per second and also in the animal we use 216 cycles per second plus a number of other frequencies that are used to direct to whatever organ system is compromised. For instance, if it's a stomach problem like gastroesophageal reflux disease or GERDs in the human being, we use 213 and then 83 for, for the stomach, 20 for the colon, 96 for the jejunum, etc. And the dog will use 216 and some other frequencies for gastrointestinal problems essentially very similar to that and we can, we can rehabilitate them by lasering just like I'm doing right now for about 180 seconds. We'll do it twice a day for three days, once a day for three days, twice twice a week for two weeks. Usually the animal is clinically asymptomatic within three days, but we continue out the whole series. This has been a lecture on dysautonomia and unbalanced autonomic nervous system in the dog, the cat, the horse, and the human too, essentially. And I can't stress to you more vehemently the fact that we're dealing with a condition that is going essentially unrecognized in the veterinary community and also in the human field too, essentially, as a potentiality for us to optimize care. This has been Dr. William Inman. I am uh, thankful for you to have a chance to look at this and have a great day.